Hello, I am Sam Hansen and we have just reached the end of the first day of the 2019 Catagoodwood Festival. With me to discuss the day's events is Racing Post senior writer Lee Mottershead. And Lee, fantastic day's racing. The weather didn't spoil it as we thought it might this morning. Um, but of course the main headline, I suppose Stradivarius, three Goodwood Cups in a row. What a remarkable horse. Yeah, and the weather pretty much came good just before the uh, Goodwood Cup and Stradivarius delivered yet again. He just keeps on running and he keeps on winning, plays the same tune time and time again and it's marvellous every time. Um, it was remarkably straightforward in the end. We had Wells Fargo going off like the clappers, really carting mm. his way down the hill, which was a little bit interesting for one. You wondered <laughs> what might happen here, but ultimately he was a spent force midway down the straight. Cross Counter and DXB who looked the big two rivals to Stradivarius. They made their bold bids for glory, but ultimately, once Frankie got Stradivarius going, the race was all over. Um, from, I was watching it from the, the grandstand and a little bit beyond the winning post, so the, not a perfect angle. And when Frankie eased down early and started <laughs> saluting, just for a second, go past the post, I was one of those that thought, my word, what's happened here? Yeah. But then when you actually saw on the TV screen, he's, he's won it very easy. And John was, John Gosler was joking about it after the race. He's a marvellous horse. You know, the, people do love these, these stayers, mm -hmm. particularly stayers, I think, with character like he's got, you know, because he is a horse who's a scrapper. He's a fighter, but he only just does enough, really. Mm -hmm. He's not going to go and win races by four or five lengths, which is why John was saying, once you apply the handbrake like Frankie did, you've got to be careful. You go over the handlebars. <laughs> Uh, no, he's, he's a fantastic horse. He'll go on to York now, hopefully and almost certainly claim this Weatherby's Hamilton £1 million bonus yeah. for a second time. And then the good news is that the owner Bjorn Nielsen seems very much minded to keep him training again next year. Part on the basis that as a stayer, realistically, he'll be standing as a national hunt stallion and therefore the potential uh, commercial benefit to him going to stud isn't the same as it would be for, a, a, say, a top miler going to stud. So hopefully we can be back here again this time next year celebrating Stradivarius winning a fourth Goodwood Cup, having today become the first horse ever to win three consecutive Goodwood Cups. That would be quite a thing. Yeah. I just want to, I like that line you said quite early about Stradivarius always hitting the right tune. Yeah. Good, good little pun that. Yeah, um, yeah. Quite right that you mentioned Bjorn Nielsen there yeah. because actually uh, Frankie de Tori and John Gosling very rightly get a lot of the plaudits for this, but he bred this horse as well as owns him. Yeah, and he really embraces the idea of making Stradivarius into a staying legend. Mm. Um, he's a man who has loved horses in the past, like Ardross and uh, Yates and these great stayers. I think he, that's another reason why he wants Stradivarius to be around again next year. Because of course, as we've seen with Enable, the longer the public uh, have an attachment with a horse, the more they take that horse to their hearts. And when you saw how packed deep this winner's enclosure was after the Goodwood Cup, you could really see that there is a bond between the racing public and Stradivarius. And if he can stay in training next season, and if he can keep winning, he'll lay claim to be right up there towards the very top of the all-time staying train. We could talk about Stradivarius all day, but we'll move on to some of the other performances, one of which was very striking, Pinatubo winning the vintage by five lengths. Yeah, uh, in some ways completely different to Stradivarius in that he's uh, a marathon man and, Stradivari and Pinatubo is a young two-year-old, but they're both quite small horses, or as John Gosden said, neat. Yeah. Um, Pinatubo is also, he looks at the minute like a two-year-old, although Charlie Appleby is pretty much convinced he'll, he'll blossom at three, and the bookmakers certainly are. Mm. Um, because they were as low as nine to four for the 2,000 guineas after the vintage stakes. Best price four to one, I think it was, straight after. Um, which seems stingy, but at the same time, this looked a very good vintage on paper beforehand with winners of good races and exciting horses, and he just dismissed them out of hand. Mm. Um, when James Doyle unleashed him, he produced a searing turn of foot, which very quickly sent him clear. He looks the real deal. Um, and assuming there is the sort of physical development that you want from two to three, and assuming he has the luck, because of course we've all seen horses win this race, including Godolphin horses, who haven't even made the Guineas. It's an awful long time between now and Guineas Day at Newmarket, so he'll need that luck on his side, but what he clearly has on his side is ability. He's a very good horse, um, and he probably won what was a very good race. Uh, a very different horse, uh, a very different performance, but equally impressive, really. Sir Dancelot, great to see him come back and claim 
another uh, Lennox Stakes. Yeah, and he's trained by a very different sort of trainer <laughs> in David Ellsworth, who I think the whole racing public adore, uh, and for good reasons. David is one of the all-time great dual-purpose trainers. You know, when he was training jumpers and flat horses at the same time, he was winning the top jumps races and the top flat races at the same time. Um, he's had a quieter period recently. It's been a pretty disappointing year. Some of said this was his first winner since April. Um, and he was clearly feeling that. His run in the first race was well beaten, but then Sir Dan Slott got him out of that rut um, in, a, in a performance that w was great to see because he's a horse who um, does so well in these seven furlong contests. They're made for him. He won it really well under Jean Mosse. And Elsie was in typical Elsie form after the race, um, saying things that you shouldn't really say in live <laughs> TV interviews, and which I won't repeat here, but he was pretty adamant that a degree of liquid refreshment would be taken <laughs> thereafter. And you can guarantee that now, where are we? We're about three hours and more after the race. A lot of liquid would have left him very refreshed, I'd say, but he deserves it. He's a great guy. Um, and a reminder here that when he gets the horse, He's still a great trainer. I like the line in the press release afterwards that he said he only wins group races these days. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> actually I think he's a very good way to be. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and just a line on uh, Northern Jockeys, all oh, doing very, very well. Their yeah. talents advertised by Danny Tudhope and PJ McDonald. Yeah, good shout. Yeah, they topped and tailed the card. Mm. Danny Tudhope, um, who of course is chasing the Jockeys Championship and has a big say in it. He won the opening race for his boss, David O'Mara, on a 25 to 1 shot. Um, and then the final two winners on the card went the way of PJ McDonald, uh, who of course won the Grit One in Deauville on Sunday on Lawrence. So a big day for the North, a good one. No wins for Mark Johnson, who normally um, runs a mock here for the North, but DXB ran well, um, but was beaten by Stradivarius, who undoubtedly and deservedly is the headline maker on day one of Glorious Goodwood. And who knows, by the end of the week, he might still be the horse who made the biggest headlines. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Lee. And don't forget to download the Racing Post app for all the must-have Glorious Goodwood info.